At the beginning of pre-flight, we need to set the camera distance and focus to a certain PPI or object size. Begin by placing a target in the V-cradle and lowering the platen. Currently, the camera distance and focus is set to 450 ppi. Let's change that to 300 ppi, which requires moving the camera back and refocusing. We'll move it up, and since we've changed the camera distance, we'll need to refocus. Open up Live Preview, open the lens, zoom in on the test target, and refocus the camera. Now pause Live View, close the lens, and close Live View, and you're ready to capture an image. Let's evaluate the PPI on this capture. At 100%, if we draw a crop between 0 and 1, with the crop cursor set to pixels, we see that this is at 313 PPI. We need to be much closer to 300 PPI. The FADGI 4-star specification for resolution says we need to be within 1% of the stated resolution. So let's move the camera again and refocus. Launch Live View, open the lens, zoom in, and refocus. Even though it was a small change, it's important that our focus be highly accurate. We can now close Live View after closing the lens. We'll remeasure PPI, and notice this time we got 302 PPI. Since FADGI 4-star only requires that we're within 1%, we have now achieved the resolution we need to. If we wished, if this was a PPI we were going to reuse in the future, we could make note of the numerical value on the side of the rail that the camera needs to be at for that PPI. Let's proceed to measuring the tone and color of this image and applying an appropriate LCC. We'll begin by zooming in on the targets between 10 and 15. We'll add RGB pickers, then using the white balance tool, white balance to patch 15. We notice that the value for white is currently at 224. That value is a little bit low, but we'll still be applying the LCC which will raise that value. So this is considered fine-tuned enough for now. Take an LCC and place it overlapping the other page side. Each camera sees a little bit of the gutter on the adjacent side, so it's important that rather than placing it perfectly flush where we miss some of the gutter, that instead we place it across. We'll need to change the shutter speed to ensure that our LCC is captured slightly darker than the main scene. In this case, I'm going one stop down from 1 8th of a second to 1 15th of a second. I'll capture the LCC at this darker exposure and when I'm satisfied the LCC has been properly captured, as shown by no blown highlights, we're now ready to rename the file, in this case to BC100 left page 300 ppi. By naming the file, we ensure that the preset for this LCC is intelligent and can be reused later. In this case, anytime we place the camera at this distance and focus, we can use this LCC without having to redo the LCC. I can remove the LCC panel and restore the shutter speed back to 1 8th. I'm now going to create an LCC from the image I just captured, not including dust removal or wide-angle lens. I can now recapture an image, and since the system is set to copy from last image, the LCC that I've applied to this LCC panel will also be applied to the incoming image. We now need to set the fine-tuning for the white balance and exposure for the properly LCC'd and focused image. Zooming back in to the 100% over 10 to 15, we'll notice that our white value is 234 and our gray balance has changed just slightly due to the LCC application. Rewipe balance, switch back to the hand cursor, and go to the exposure. We can now increase the exposure in tenth of a stop increments until we are at or below the 242 target. In this case, we were lucky enough to hit it perfectly. If necessary, you can use hundredths values, such as 0.11, to modify in smaller amounts. 
Having hit 242 on the 10 patch, our exposure is now set. Our white balance is set, our LCC is set, and our focus and resolution are set. We're now ready to begin production.